Hey everybody, um, just wanted to talk a little bit more about my visions and, um, and how they unfolded and, and maybe why. And, um, and one of the things I was talking about is, um, how, um, it's kind of my little joke is, hey, you know, why do I like Bill Leave so much? Maybe it's because he reminds me of a bird, you know? He's just like this big warm-blooded reptile, just like my bird. And, you know, the reason I say Bill Leave is a warm-blooded reptile, well, because he sings kind of like one, you know, like sometimes he sings like a big spooky dragon in breath, but sometimes he sounds like a deadly vicious snake. So yeah, um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so, um, but the, the reason I'm making a joke about how, why, why would I be, you know, uh, why would I care about somebody like Billy? Because it's not necessarily somebody that cares about me, right? And, you know, can't kind of like, um, Sometimes we keep things around us that don't care about us either, like our pet lizards, right? But we keep them anyways because we love them. So there's nothing wrong with giving love. That's why I talked a little bit about a lesson in love. Sometimes we um, love people or animals or things, and um, and they can't and they can't pay us back in the form of love in the way that you would like. But um, but the thing is, is um, it it has been a lesson in love for a lot of reasons, you know, um, because um, like okay. First of all, I wouldn't know about Bill Lieb as much as I do. Like, maybe I would have heard his music, but I would have moved on. Because I think I would have just gotten tired of industrial music and moved on. So that's why I think, you know, maybe having these visions about Bill Lieb was something to help kind of keep me intact with the industrial music community. And, um, and there's a lot of personal stuff. Like, there's like certain parallels in our lives and just kind of opportunities to meet each other. And, um... So, like, why would Bill Lee be the one to appear in my uh, visionary state when there's all these other artists that are, you know, super important and inspirational to me? Like, um, most of my favorite bands were, like, uh, like coming out of, like, England and, and Europe and stuff. And the funny thing, when I first heard Frontline Assembly, I kind of thought they were European, too. And then I found out, oh, they're just from Canada. But actually, Bill Lee is from Europe. So, yeah, there you go. Another Eastern European. Um, he has that sound in his music. Anyways, um... So, like, I probably would have discovered Frontline Assembly eventually, but I probably would have lost interest, except that, um, you know, I'd had all these uh, visionary state experiences. And and um, the, the problem with it is, um, so, I'm being shown this person as somebody who loves me. This is somebody that loves me, and somebody that's going to want to meet me again. But um, when I actually did try to contact Bill or go to meet him, I felt like we didn't really make friends and so it kind of makes me look stupid you know like well then what the hell do you care about this guy for so much for and and um you know i've been told that uh well there seems to be something very unhealthy about this um maybe i'm paying too much attention to this person or or giving them you know too much thought but um and i i kind of feel the same way you know it is really frustrating like i just i kind of um tried to find different ways to let it go mostly by being an asshole like I don't know maybe I just tried to like say a bunch of rude shit and walk off on it but like it always kind of it always kind of draws me back and um and what it's really kind of come down to is um I kind of think um maybe Bill Lieb was the uh principal character in my visionary state uh narrative because he's probably the closest thing we could find to my father now my father's still alive but um you know maybe um this has a lot to do with my personal relationship with my father um, so there's like me trying to cope with him and, and our problems, you know, like, so I think, you know, maybe, uh, we've had mental health issues in our family due to different things. Like, um, there's like cultural reasons, like, you know, we have ex-military in our family. Just, it was like, you know, people just beat each other up. People are just hard on each other in this culture. Then you bring in, um, maybe the partying. There were times when there was alcohol being used that had violence in our family and, so we have violence in our family <laughs> and, and things like that. And so that's probably where the lesson in love comes in is, you know, um, that, that sometimes you love people that don't love you back or sometimes you love people that are, are hard to live with. And um, uh, so who knows, maybe that's why, you know, um, and I'm really sorry he got picked for the for the job of being in my vision. And, and, and it's probably weird, you know, like if I was him, I, I don't know, maybe I'd be really weirded out too. So if he's weirded out, I get it. Um, but um, I'm not I'm not really trying to weird anybody out. I'm just... I'm just kind of sharing what happened to me, you know, and, um, 
And I, and I think um, it's fun to talk about. It's really a, a colorful event, you know, because what I'm seeing is the type of thing where um, I must be a little bit clairvoyant. I'm kind of gaining information that's remote to me. But at the same time, I don't think I'm really imagining it. I feel like something's being shown to me. So um, so the reason Bill Leap is being shown to me, it could be to help me cope with my dad or like, you know, when, when kids are having problems growing up, they get this imaginary friend. Well, there's no way I should have known who Bill Lieb was. Um, so 1982 is when I first started seeing him in my visions. And the first time we really heard who he was officially was 1987 when my father wrote to uh, to Bushido and, and he wrote to Gary Levermore because he, he was telling him that, hey, this is my daughter's favorite band and I think it's interesting for several reasons. So he wrote back and he mentioned Frontline Assembly to us. And um, it kind of rung a bell. Like I, I thought I heard of that before. And um, so my dad really liked it. He caught on real fast. And so I kind of, I kind of liked it too. And it grew on me over time and stuff. But like, um, it's like I was saying earlier. And I think sometimes our favorite artists are the ones that we kind of see a little bit of ourselves in. And I think my dad really liked Frontline Assembly because he could kind of see a little bit of himself in Bill Lieb. And you know, it, in a lot of ways, I can see the parallel there. And um, and so um. Anyways, I kind of think the other reason um, Bill Lieb was in my visions because like him and my dad are two people that like um, are kind of keeping me interested in music. Like, you know, talking to my dad, he's like a big album collector and uh, something that him and Bill Lieb have in common is that um, uh, they're collectors. The thing is, is Bill Lieb will say he's really proud that he has possibly the biggest album collection in the Vancouver area. Well, my dad will tell you he's super proud, not that he has the biggest album collection, but that he probably has the best album collection, at least within the state of Florida. So these guys are really proud about the, the music they collect. They have a lot of uh, enthusiasm about their music and they have very similar taste. Um, I think, you know, there, there's going to be, uh, I think that, that, who knows, they might actually make friends with each other <laughs> if they met each other. But sometimes you put people that are too much alike together and they won't make friends. But anyways, um, you know, I kind of think... Um, there's some parallels, you know, with, you know, me and my father, but most importantly, I think, um, I think that the, the one thing that these guys would want to see happen, and I don't know necessarily from me, but I feel like I want to, I want to supply that is, um, I really want to bring support back to this music community and, um, and find a way to be, you know, to contribute. Like, I hope I can make music. I hope I can just be involved somehow and, and kind of give my love back to this music community because I feel like it's really, you know, um, it's kind of my family, you know, kind of, uh, I, I could have walked away from it and went on to other things, but I really love um, this this uh, industrial music community. And so I think that um, a big part of why Bill Lieb is in my life and these visions is to kind of help keep me intact. And so thanks to these visions, um, that's why we know each other. That's why you're seeing me now. If you're meeting me now, that's why I'm in Montana. If you're friends with me up here, a lot of people who've met me um, in the past 10, 20 years, um, part of the reason you're meeting me is because I'm following these visions and I've been, you know, wanting to uh, go to the music business, business eventually. But, you know, I've been going from one thing to the next in my life and um, my, you know, my karma's taken me in different directions, but um, I'm still, I'm still fighting my way back. And, and so anyways, that's why I wanted to make this video was to tell you that, um, I think the reason Bill Lieb comes into my visions and the reason I like him is he's probably the closest thing to my dad uh, resemblance wise and also again he wants to help uh, you know I think Bill Lieb and my father both uh, have a, a, a great deal of passion for music and I would really love to see the music culture live on so let me stop it here and I'll come back with some more uh, discussion on this and I'll talk to you soon.